Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The How Train Management Agency is working to acquire additional train sets for the rapid rail system. Natalie Grieve tells us more. Hi Natalie. Hi Chanel. Why are the additional train sets needed and what will this contract entail? Well, there's no secret that since the, the Ga train was introduced six years ago that the uptake has been pretty much phenomenal. Um, in fact, recent figures uh, supplied by the Ga train management agency has put monthly uh, ridership figures at around 1.4 million a month. So obviously it's very popular um, and the number of those using it, particularly around peak hours, are increasing at a pretty consistent rate on a monthly basis. So this decision isn't really much of a shock. So earlier this month, the Bombela Concession Company invited qualified companies to uh, submit requests for qualification documents. They're also known as RFQs for the design, manufacture and maintenance of 12 train sets. Um, this, this bid or this, this tender would also include d the design and construction of infrastructure for several GAR train depots so that the infrastructure around the stations can kind of keep up with this increased demand. Um, now, to maximize local content, which in this case has been put at a 65% threshold, um, the maintenance of these trains and the maintenance of the additional infrastructure has been included in the, in the contract. So that's quite an important provision there. The RFQ proposal stage will end on uh, March the 7th, after which um, we'll have a list of shortlisted bidders and they will then advance to the request for proposals phase, which is expected to end in around November or December. What will this cost and how will it be funded? Well, the Gartrain Management Agency CEO Jack van der Mava and the provincial MEC for Transport Ishmael Vardy were very clear um, at an information se uh, session for bidders this week that no money would be drawn from the fiscus to fund the rolling stock procurement program. Um, so it would be a completely self-funded model and in fact Vardy said that he didn't want to create the impression that the, the province was in any way trying to subsidize transport for the rich. Um, so basically the, the business case is premised on revenue that would be garnered as a result of the additional passengers that would then be used to, to pay back any sort of outstanding debt. Um, and it would also, the province would also look to funding sources within the existing concession agreement with uh, the BCC um, to, to fund the rolling stock procurement program. Now, the Development Bank of South Africa has been named as the mandated lead, lead arranger, and they've agreed to an in-principle loan of 3.5 billion rand. So they'll also go out and approach other banks. The Development Bank of South Africa is then going to channel this 3.5 billion rand loan uh, into the Gautrain Management Agency, which is going to take over the, the running uh, or the selection of a successful bidder for the rolling stock procurement contract. Seven bidders have already expressed an interest in supplying the train sets. Who are they and what are the procurement steps going forward? Well, we do have limited capacity in terms of the companies um, that are South African that are able to service a contract of this extent. So of the seven bidders that have submitted um, document requests, only two of them are local. One is Transnet Engineering, the other one is a, is a more recent entrance, entrant to the market known as Mazana Engineering. In terms of the other five, uh, we see the, the, the usual suspects in the international rolling stock market. So we have French firm Alstom, we have Canadian firm Bombardier, who were involved in the original rollout of, of the Gao train and the provision of, of the rolling stock there. Uh, we also have Chinese firm uh, CSR East, um, another company DCD rolling stock, uh, and then German Siemens. It's also been outlined by Van der Mava, who, who heads up the Gauteng Management Agency, as I said earlier, that over the next 10 years they would also look to add 48 new rail cars to their rolling stock. So there's more scope for additional tendering in future that these companies could potentially take advantage of. And then beyond 2020, he has uh, also outlined that they plan to look at capacity um, they plan to look at the network and in fact there's currently feasibility studies that are underway looking at possibly extending uh, the Gao train rail network to other parts of the province. Um, we just haven't yet got a final plan on that. Um, but 
you know, it's hoped that any sort of extension to the rail line as well as any sort of rolling stock is going to tie into a, a very ambitious plan that's been outlined by the current provincial dispensation where it's envisaged that we'll have a very f large scale multimodal integrated transport network that spans the entire province. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.